Hello, fellow Mega Tennis, and welcome to another episode of the Hello, Fellow Mega Tennis podcast. I'm LaRue, and with me is Neb. Hello. Glib. Hello. Spider. Hi there. And it's our <laughs> December episode. This is a gift to you guys. So this is our Christmas gift to all of you. We have a lot of news, I guess. And I guess we'll get into it right now. <laughs> all right. I think the first interesting thing that has happened is Atlas is now no longer Atlas USA. They are now Atlas West. <laughs> what do you guys think about that? <laughs> uh, Still- this is pretty good news, I think. Uh, they, they combined with the European branch, right? Yeah, they're saying um, the European manager, PR manager said that they're trying to unify all the Western content. So does that mean all the Europeans are going to stop complaining about not getting merch or whatever they're mad about? They're probably still not going to get merch. <laughs> <laughs> they don't deserve the merch. It's just how it is sometimes, man. Just live in America. What's the problem? Um, what else What else happened with that? I think that it was funny that... Um, well, not funny. It was interesting that the PR manager also mentioned that she was saying that they're going to also be doing these types of interesting events like the Catherine event and the gallery, but also in Europe. So I think that's kind of another plus as a result of them merging. And it falls in line with Sega's like 2020 goal of being unified or whatever they were saying. Do you remember what I'm talking about? Yeah. They had a um, statement about wanting to do global releases or something. Yeah. Which I don't think is going to happen in 2020, but it's, they're getting closer, I guess. <laughs> like global simultaneous releases? Yes. Yeah, that was their goal for 2020. As an, a, a, just a random aside, um, have you guys <laughs> paid attention to the Tokyo, uh, Tokyo Olympics game that's coming out? The Mario and Sonic Tokyo Olympics? I saw it sold abysmally. Nope. I've heard bad things. Yeah. <laughs> you know who developed that game? Uh, Sega. Sega, yeah, that's they're one of the developers. Um Activision. No. <laughs> Stop. Camelot? Nintendo. They tend to do the Mario sport uh, games. So I don't know if you guys are aware of the company Alpha Dream. No, Sounds I've never heard of them. Who's up? So of the like five or so good Mario games, they're the ones that made them. <laughs> really? So like Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga, Inside Bowser Story, Dream Team. Okay, I've never heard of those. Really? No, I have, but I just think they're dumb. I think they're some of the only good Mario games, but that company went out of business as a result of <laughs> Mario and Sonic. <laughs> oh, wow. I know, it's like, that's sad. So we're not getting any wow. more Mario and Luigi RPG <laughs> games anymore. Ah, that's so rip that. Oh yeah, I just looked them up on October twenty first. They were October having. 1st. High, I think Sega was having high expectations for that too. When I was looking at their uh, little reports, yeah. yeah. Oh, well, that must be a real bummer. One time, yeah, and they like led with that. They were like Mario and Sonic at the Olympics. It's like, okay, man. Yeah. So I mean, you're into. Just thought I'd plug that in because I think it's like the weirdest, depressing news because they didn't even do all of the Mario and Sonic stuff, but they did some of the good like mini games or whatever. Dude, they made the Hamtaro games. Yeah, those How games are out of business. Shit. Little Hamsters Big Adventures? No, the only thing I know about one. Hamtaro is the hamster dance. <laughs> <laughs> do, was that a, do you remember that? <laughs> was that exclusive to the English version, by the way? I don't know. I just remember it on uh, all the school computers when I was a kid. It was just like a little wallpaper of the hamster dance. <laughs> I remember watching that show, but I do not remember a single plot line or a character or anything that occurred. The best thing is that it wasn't like hamster. It was like hamster. I don't know why. It was spelled that way? For I process? remember it. I remember it being hamster like you know, all right. I th- I think this is a Berenstain type deal for you. 
You're a Berenstain. <laughs> I think you're getting mandela right now. But, um, so that's interesting. Atlas West. I don't like the name because they rebranded to say to their official Twitter as official Atlas West. And it's, you know, so it's kind of jarring. It doesn't roll off the tongue I was as well as Atlas USA, in my opinion. Yes. But, but eventually we'll get used to Atlas, official Atlas West. It did Do they have Atlas in, East or is it just Atlas JP? It's Atlas Japan and then Atlas everywhere else west of Japan. I guess. <laughs> okay, interesting. <laughs> and the 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 crazy little side thing or side result of them changing is that someone obviously took the Atlas USA handle on Twitter and officially and like just started posting random gibberish like just memes. And since that Twitter feed was like connected to Atlas USA's website, it was like running this, <laughs> these really dumb memes on their official website. So I think so, one of the memes was like Atlas. I mean, Persona Five is canceled. Yeah, that was the very first one that was on the website. Yes. <laughs> Damn. And then that also spawned parody accounts. So now there's official Atlas um, West, and then there's official Atlas with an I West. Right. Right. And then official Atlas North, official Atlas Madagascar, and that that's gotten to the point where um, a Spanish news outlet actually believed one of the memes that that Persona Four G <laughs> was coming to PS4, which is just another <laughs> nugget. That's great. But yeah, w- w- what would be a better name besides Atlas West? You think? Atlas. Uh, yeah. I mean, I don't it's like a tax thing or something to bother doing that. Like why not have just a universal brand identity? I don't know anything about marketing or I think it's fine to have the handle as Atlas West, but just have everything else labeled just Atlas. Right. Yeah, I don't I also just don't really get the pro- the point. <laughs> I mean, I like symbolically, I guess it's cool because now it's Atlas, like West, you know, USA and Europe, but out, outside of that, I don't think there's really the much utility. You don't need the official too, because you got the blue tick on Twitter. Oh yeah, <laughs> so, just kind of redundant. But yeah, that happened. In other Atlas news, that's not related to Persona. Thank God, um, Sergima is guest designing a or the guest designed a character for sakura wars and it looks like the re fantasy art it, yeah it's the good art style the like the unadult unadulterated sojima the non the non like i guess user-friendly sojima it's just him in his element i think painterly sojima and i like the the design what do you guys think of it yeah, I think it's pretty neat. Um, I mean, I don't know anything about Sakura Wars, um, so I don't think I'll ever encounter it or play it, but I hope that's fun and that the character looks cool in motion or whatever is going to go on. It looks not like Sojima's art in the game, but it's cool. Yeah. <laughs> um, I've only seen that concept art that we were posting. But if you look at uh, the other or, characters, yeah, it's or, interesting. Or the the other ones are like jarring <laughs> compared to his. Oh really? Yeah, because they have like a more straightforward anime style. Like, I think there's three other um, guest designers. Like, but um, you know, Sujima has his distinctive painterly way. She's also a bit older than the rest of the cast, I think, because she's an instructor. So she's not as young as the main cast. Oh she's yeah, cool. I just looked this up, and this just looks like any anime garbage that I've seen in my life. That's yeah. cool. Good for that. Three houses. I don't what know what you say? said. It's like three houses. Yeah, Fire it's going to be bad like that. Yeah, three houses sucks. You're right. Wow. Okay. Yeah, it's <laughs> probably a bad game. It is better than your favorite Mega Ten game. Imagine playing SRPGs. Strange Journey. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> like that now? Damn. But it, yeah, the in-game art looks bizarre. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, sorry. it's weird. 
Yeah. But but it oh looks like the rest of the art from the game, so that's good. And the Greedy, character's name. Greedy. It's bizarre. It's just uncanny. What's wrong with her mouth? <laughs> She has she has it's no so mouth. It's so small. Her mouth is like her pupil. She has no mouth. That's that's What's the whole going thing. On? But her name is what? Murasame. I don't know how to No, not I'm not gonna do this. Hakushu Murasame. And she's cool. She has sword skills or whatever. And yeah. She has her hair color is symbolic to the personality type, like every other anime character kind of does. So that's that's right. her. And yeah, play Sakura Wars. Um, I wish I knew anything about it, but I've I've only heard the name in passing. I think literally Spider's the only person that's ever said Sakura Wars to me. So uh, I only know about it because of um, the Sega Fest ads were everywhere. <laughs> and I was watching yeah. most of Sega Fest, so I, I got to see that a lot. Oh, you're right. It was everywhere. I actually just googled Sakura Wars. Do you want do you want the general the general wiki article of it? <laughs> no, no, I'm no. good. Please. This is okay. my type of game. Good. Okay. I'm glad we didn't. Oh wait. I do have to say the guy who did Bleach is one of the artists behind Sakura Wars as of like the present. So like 2019 to going forward. His name is Tight Kubo, I guess. Yes. Kubo, yeah. He's Mexican or half Mexican or something. Why is that important? That. It's important. important. Do you want to explain? Because his he made a character who isn't Mexican. Wow. And also That's very brave. And he used Spanish words in Bleach, so that's cool. <laughs> Wait, is he really Mexican for real? Um, yeah, I think so. I See now I'm doubting it. I could have swore. He was okay. Now let me look it up. It's <laughs> my first time hearing that. That makes, no, that makes wait, sense. No, wait, no, we're not. We're not looking this up. Actually, he he's he's Mexican, probably. <laughs> I want to learn this. Probably. Yeah, I mean, whatever. We research. We got well, probability. <laughs> our 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 podcast is about Megaton, and Bleach is not. This it's is not no, Mega or Tony. This is now I've never really watched podcast. it, but it's basically just it's basically just Naruto, but edgier. Right? No, it's Naruto, but boringer. Like, <laughs> okay. ima- just imagine if everyone was more boring, and that's Bleach. <laughs> and okay. one Bleach is good for like one arc. Okay, excuse it's you. Good up until the part where the girl gets kidnapped. Um, no, we're not talking about Bleach. <laughs> okay. yeah. right. We're, he about pleasant he things. Oh, what so, about that event? Well, of course, got popular. <laughs> so we we actually got an interesting thing that happened on Twitter before they rebranded. Alice did this crazy twelve day countdown to what everyone already figured was the release date, and we got that as of what yesterday. The release date the day of before what? the release date of Persona Five Royale with cheese, oh. and, and they also uh, they also revealed what the collector's edition will look like, the Phantom Thieves edition. It's the game with a sampler CD, which you know has never happened in Atlas history. A sampler <laughs> art book, which also is new, <laughs> and a somewhat you know suspect mask, so you can pretend that you're Joker while you're playing, because all Persona Five fans have played <laughs> Persona Five. Yes, there's going to be a lot of Joker cosplay going around after this. There's already a lot. <laughs> well, instead of fifty percent, it's going to be ninety percent. That's cool because I can't wait for Anime Expo 2020 where the Persona meetup is just Jokers. <laughs> and there's going to be one person who's from Persona 3 and no one's going to know that character. Uh, and <laughs> it's going to be Joker meetup, rest of Mega 10. I, actually, they should just do that. <laughs> the Joker meetup. <laughs> but um, they also announced a couple of interesting tidbits. The DLC will be free. Well, not all the DLC, just the old DLC for Persona 5. The Persona 5 Royale, Ro- I keep saying Royale, Royal is not going to be free. So you definitely have to pay for it. But our price price point is a little cheaper than Atlas Japan. And, and Atlas Japan's prices are like 7 bucks or 8 bucks. So luckily we're not Japanese is the point because we don't have Thank to pay God. so much. Well, I was going to pay for DLC anyways. 
Yeah, and I mean, I'm not gonna even download the DLC. What like, do I really need some lame like whatever? Point is, you don't, don't care about the super boss for. Uh, I I, I hardly hard. even care about. I don't even care about the. No, I shouldn't. I'm gonna make a lot of enemies. Persona Five I is a great game. Not about the fight, <laughs> but that's about it. <laughs> All of Just your extra wife's though, but still, it's kind of like that's actually nice fan service. I guess. Except Strange Journeys DLC does not feature any of the important Strange Journey music. It actually features Alex's theme, the worst part of Strange Journey Redux. So if you really like Strange Journey Redux, go ahead and buy Strange Journey DLC. Instead of doing the clever idea of making Morgana Bugaboo or Mastema or another interesting character, they just gave Morgana the Demon Eho um, suit. So... It kind of fits, but not really. And I, I could go into detail about how I think there's a lot of lazy decisions in terms of the non-Persona um, DLC packs, but I really feel like that D- those DLC packs are not worth it because of that. I find it strange that they have the a Strange Journey pack with Alex's theme, but no Alex. Yeah, they should have made, um, what's her name? The new girl, Alex Kasumi, because they're literally the same concept. The new ca- The new girl character just invented for this new game. You know what I mean? New, edgy. Yeah. Mean. Kasumi, Kasumi's new, edgy. She's mean. She's got a gun. Yep, yep. just like uh, just like every other new girl. Uh, well, they're, they're kind of the same at the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Maybe it's not what Marie needed to be cool for everyone to like her. Give her a, a gun. gun? Yeah. Yeah, I think we're, I think we're on to something. Actually, yes. if yes. if Marie, sorry, go ahead. No, just trying to kill. I'm agreeing. Try to kill him. No, Pull up the gun. What I what I think would have made Marie better is if she didn't do the poems. The poems were the worst part of Marie's character, in my opinion. When you have to Her go through it's like a, yeah, it's kind of a three way tie between like the things she says that aren't poems, the poems, and then just every part of her body and clothing <laughs> messenger bag what the hell is I, the hat the i tights? use a messenger bag fuck you i wear tights <laughs> you just dress up like marie every day you're, you're just sitting at your pier like i don't see the problem i actually or have marie's hat, hat, so i could be marie okay you're just you're slow trickling into what i just said uh, i've got the hat i don't wear it every day but Marie's bad, but in a good way. No. Alex is bad in a bad way. Um, yeah, she sucks, but whatever. So when they released that, um, or when they announced that whole thing, the Twitter also decided to promote this cryptic message saying that the Phantom Thieves will take over four cities in America. And they gave very specific locations. Little Tokyo for Los Angeles. Little Japan for San Francisco. All of Chicago. <laughs> yep. And all of New York. <laughs> That's a lot of Japanese people in those other two cities, if you don't know. I mean, the state or the city? That's the thing. Yeah, That's all of New York State. Yeah, yeah. So they figure so, it out. <laughs> so what I was told was the hashtag they used, which was wear the mask, which spelled W E A R the mask that was supposed to be a double meaning hashtag. The second meaning meaning wear the mask, like W H E R E as in you should look for these dumb locations. And that's deep. So it's supposed to be, it's so deep. It almost seems like it was a total mistake. Yeah. So here's, here's the, here's the rundown. Atlas is tweeting to promote, what everyone assumes is the release date, the day before they announce the release date, they add in some strange language hinting at some sort of physical event happening because they mentioned that Atlas will take over four cities, right? Yeah. The day of, they say that they're taking over, they they say which cities are taking over, and they say that it's happening soon. About an hour or so later the voice actors start to post tweets saying that they're at the location or whatever, and that it's happening soon. And they can't say when, but soon. 
What do you think was the event? Glib, what what <laughs> I feel like you would have the most insight. You have you have the biggest persona brain in this <laughs> so what do you think they did to promote this this event, you know, to promote the release of this game? Uh they projected it on the walls. Like what do you, what do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> You're supposed to pretend you don't know. But yeah, I was confused. Okay, it's fine. I, I I know now that I will never joke with you again. Yeah, I've tried to set him up for jokes too. He doesn't. It doesn't work, man. It's fine. It's fine. I I just hate you. Okay. Is the just, is the resolution the resolution to that? The point is, me the rock next time. Come on. The point is, they projected on these uh, walls. One of which was an unauthorized projection, and they were asked to stop. Um, may, did, what of you guys want to take over telling this story? Because I, I, I'm. I'm I think little... that's the whole story. <laughs> yeah, I think that's where it ends, basically. Besides is... the disappointment at the end. Yeah. So, uh, Frank. Oh yeah. How, what about the event? How many people were there? Um, from the footage that I was able to find on Twitter, there was approximately four. People there to meet the voice actors in LA, of which was the only city that the voice actors actually appeared at. Um, the other one in Boston, or not Boston, in uh, um, Chicago, Chicago, featured uh, one person who is the person that took the picture that they then used that picture as their promotion. And there was approximately one person in San Francisco. And there were five people in New York. Two of the five were, I, don't know, I guess you can call them, um, what are those people called who are popular on social media? Influencers. Influencers. Dots. <laughs> okay, yeah. I was trying to be politically correct, but yes, that's, yeah. You said thoughts? Yeah. Instagram <laughs> so there's, thoughts, specifically. So there's, 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 there's um, yeah, there's two uh, persona influencers, um, Mystic mystical distance mystic distance he's famous for working for persona central doing all the translation work and generally being a person who does things persona 5 related and there's also fan site a guy who loves to post persona 5 related content and as a result is pretty popular for it they kind of hosted a mini meetup where everyone went to their location of the sign once it went up and yeah so there was that and in terms of Atlas events, I guess it was a start. <laughs> They've had yeah. better in the past, much better. They had great events this year. This is not one of them. Yeah. And it's it's one of those things where, unfortunately, there was just <laughs> no logical planning involved. It just went yeah. from a vague estimation of what they're going to do, a vague, like, time frame and then it happened and everyone were was essentially disappointed how did anyone find it i found it because i i actually am pretty familiar with little tokyo so i already knew where they were gonna like i knew the, the that they had to do some sort of thing in the main part of little tokyo because it's only like a block like little tokyo and in, in um, los angeles is basically a a city block of stuff and that's it I just didn't know exactly what part of the block they're gonna like do whatever they're they're gonna do. For everyone else, it seems like they found it after the fact because um, when they posted the Boston, is it Boston? No, it's Chicago. I don't know why I keep saying Boston. The Chicago one, like the first response to that tweet was someone saying, "I've been walking around for three hours trying to find this, and you're telling me that it's at like a Seven Eleven because it was projected onto a wall." With above a 7-Eleven at a arbitrary part of Chicago that no one were, would have predicted, basically. I saw someone on Twitter said they were walking around looking for it and they couldn't find it. Yeah, and then, <laughs> you know, after the, it, the pictures went up, then people used, like, the other things included in the photos. Like, the New York one had a CVS logo on it, so people were able to figure out where it was. Um, the one from San Francisco was similar, where people... The per- someone live tweeted showing that it was taking place on a wall of a theater or something. And I, if, I think that's the one that got taken down, correct? Mm, no, I think it was the one that was on... Wait, no. 
Yeah, maybe it was. It was either that one or, Bo- or Chicago. One of those two, the um, the owner of the building asked them to stop or something. And that's what happened. Oh. It's the first time they've done an event outside of a convention outside of Los Angeles because they've done only events within the context of a convention, i.e. Anime Expo. Well, I'm talking about outside of Los Angeles. So like Anime Expo, PAX West is another one they've done events at. And um, Taiyokan, I think that's in Arizona, where they've had... Uh, Peach juice, lotus juice. Oh my god, <laughs> wow. that's quite a mistake. Sorry, I was, I, I just knew it was something Japanese, and peaches that's a are much Japanese. sexier name. Imagine drinking lotuses, that sounds gross. I don't like that. Uh, yeah, the only good part of that whole thing was, uh, I don't know, I don't think we mentioned it yet. Uh, there was a someone edited the old um, screen cap of the news cycle when I think it was an Aqua Teen Hunger Force yep. uh, yeah, gorilla <laughs> marketing ad and it was basically like they put up these little um, light bright signs of the two guys the little cartoon guys and they put Moon them Nights. on yeah, Moon Nights, on the pillars of these like overpass of the freeway or whatever and people thought they were bombs so they had to get bomb squad out and it was like the news, the Chiron on the news whatever thing was like cartoon fun or dangerous bombs like who knows what this is and then they photoshopped it to have the the projected image of the phantom thief shit on the background <laughs> that, that was that was a good little edit so i made good job yeah it was um it was awesome actually <laughs> it's a shame that didn't happen in real life because that just would have made the event that much more of a disaster but what are you gonna do no idea. The um the thing so just like a random aside to that bit of information, the artist who put up those Moon and I Moon and I? Moon and I? Sounds weird. Yeah, whatever. Sure. Moon and I um uh light bright signs was this, the street artist uh, Zebler. He's somewhat popular. He's just kind of imagine um there's another one who does that sort of style of street art who's much more popular basically but he's the boston massachusetts wow i can't how do you say that state mass uh just tried to allude to boston like nine times and then the only There's, time it was relevant think, and fucked it up i think it's just because i don't i don't know it's because i'm reading the word bomb threat and i'm just like boston bomber <laughs> he's west coast biased yeah he lives in a bubble. It's a little LA bubble. Sorry, sorry that the East Coast is so irrelevant. It's hard to remember a basic oh, wow. factoid. So that's, that, ra- that's racist. So Persona Five Royal is coming out March of next year, and the best time zone—I mean, best time slot between all of the most biggest AAA releases. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it's gonna that's, do. That's a great idea. It's gonna do well, <laughs> I imagine. <laughs> Sorry, if we all me. pre-order guys that so we can get the numbers up that's what matters well i already canceled my other pre-orders i canceled cyber cyberpunk 20 something four or whatever because i was like i don't even know if i'm gonna like this game do i really want to um support red um cd, CD project, project red, red yeah. a company oh, that cool. i know consistently makes good content or should i just dump that and buy two copies of <laughs> oh there we go yeah well, the same game i already bought last year well, it's so nice you got to buy it twice, right? So at, at least they're not releasing at the same time as uh, set Final Fantasy VII. There's kind of almost a month between them, so that's something. Yeah, yeah, that's good. What I was told, <laughs> this is like secondhand information, so it's not like direct from source. But I was told that the reason why they pushed it back was because Atlas Marketing did not want this release date to overlap the Tokyo Mirage Sessions release, which is like, what, February or January? January 17th. So they, so they tried to give it some like time apart so people wouldn't basically um, have to choose between one or the other. And then right. they just didn't really consider everything else that's happening in that same release time. Yeah, I mean, I guess they're working with what they could do, but... 
can't have the perfect release date. And I feel like they'll have a pretty good market share. You know, people will buy the same goddamn game again because they like yeah. it. Yeah. I can't believe we're getting more of this game, actually, with how bad it did in both in overseas and here. Yeah. I, I, with, <laughs> it's really shocking. Yeah. I don't even know what to say. Wait, you're talking about Tokyo Mara sessions being bad? Yeah. No. no. Let's not talk about that. <laughs> it's the worst game, probably. I'm it's probably censoring, worse than if. I'm censoring. I'm going to edit this part of the podcast out. Get ready. Ready. <laughs> okay, Nintendo. Don't lie. Tokyo. Uh, okay, so out of the games that are probably coming out next year, it's like, what? Tokyo Mirage Sessions, um, Persona 5 R. We're probably going to get um, Scramble next year as well. We're probably going to get Aegis. Rim as well. The one that's going to be the best of those games in terms of quality and fun is Tokyo Mirage Sessions. So bad mouthing that game is a direct slight against me. You know, Strikers, no, Strikers is going to be okay. I bet. I guarantee you, it's just going to be okay. It means a Musa, so probably. Yeah. So people are hyped because it's it kind of surpasses the general expectation, which is pretty low for a Musao game. But you have to remember that it's still the same team. <laughs> and I played the One Piece Musao game, which is, I guess, getting a sequel or something. It's just okay. Like, it's just the same game, but you're now playing as Luffy, which is the same game as the Zelda version or the, the um, Japanese version or the Chinese version. They're all the same game. So... It's going to be one of those things where it's going to be slightly different, but it's just okay. Ignoring the gameplay, though, it's a sequel to P5. Yeah, I think that's interesting. Usually spinoffs are kind of like, it's a sequel, but then it takes place in a time loop, and that's why it it actually didn't happen. It seems like it's They always have some cop-out bullshit to be like, oh, here's this way to have this very convenient way for all these characters to interact, but not have any bearing on any part of the plot. But this is supposed to be like a 1.5 type deal. Like, it takes like six months after um, P5. The I final think. chapter. Okay. So, that's that's uh, kind of cool. Of the characters are in college and all that. That's really cool. I didn't know that. I've been kind of just not following. The only thing that I want that I have that I can say about strikers that can add anything of value is that people are mad that it's called Scramble, and it's because it's in Shibuya. Shibuya has one very popular location called Shibuya Scramble Crossing, and that's a major part of this game. So it's called Scramble because Shibuya Crossing Scramble. And so. I assume the other locations are going to take place in the Scramble too. Yeah, and it's but it's just like <laughs> if you're not a true weeb like me, you wouldn't understand that that's why it's a good name. Yeah, I idiots. mentioned this before. Yes, <laughs> but I just feel like I have to say it because, yeah, I've I've seen some people be upset about it, which is very bizarre. But you know, you're welcome to be upset about something that's intelligent if you don't like it. <laughs> it's a pretty good name, I think. Uh, the Phantom Strikers is a bit long winded, but you know, that's Atlas. <laughs> that's all right. It's not so. The longer bad. the title, the more interest there is. <laughs> Seems like it. I mean, look at the Rido games. <laughs> Hey, that's a whole paragraph there. But do you guys know anything else about Striker? Because I literally, that's the only thing I know. Is well, they put up that video, didn't they? It was like, it's I don't, in I Japanese, don't watch it, so I don't, I don't fucking understand it. I've watched most of the trailers. Um, hmm. What would constitute new spoilers? <laughs> yeah, well, we can just talk about basically, like, there's new characters, there's a cop sort of guy. Who kind of works with the Phantom Thieves, but not really. But maybe he does. But maybe he won't. But maybe he will. Uh, there's a new lady who looks like a like a fucked up like cotton candy clown type lady. Oh yeah, she looks dumb. Yeah. But whatever. Yeah, I hate her, but that's cool that clowns exist and are treated like humans or whatever. Um, and then there's a couple other characters that are new. I don't really know anything about them though. Uh, there's a character named Natsumi, and he's a writer. Okay. Yeah, and he's looks like he's an antagonist. He's probably one of the first ones or second one. Well, isn't that Cotton Candy Girl like an antagonist? She looks bad. 
Yeah, she had yellow not. eyes, so she looked evil. Yeah, she's probably too as well. I mean, I adult characters are probably going to be evil. <laughs> I mean, they're in college, so they're evil by by default too. Once they yeah, once they graduate, brings back the adults back into P two from <laughs> you know, like adults. they can actually use personas. Yeah, the only other time that that happens is what Trinity Soul. Uh, they can't use. Can they use them in there? I don't remember. Yes, literally they the can? first episode, the main the the main character's older brother, he summons one, and That's it's the really ugly. guy, right? Uh, I don't. Know. He's. I mean, I don't remember. Them. It's been they're, a long time. They're all moody. Like, just imagine every everybody like pouting all the time. If everyone was a Persona Three protagonist, that's the cast for for Trinity. <laughs> Sorry, um, I, I'm just. Everyone's gonna like hate this podcast because I'm just giving all these hot takes. But basically, that's, light it up, man. No, I lo- I love Persona. Like, I just like to also dunk on Persona. Sorry. Uh, I think the new, uh, not the other two characters, not, but uh, the cop, his name is Hasegawa Zenkichi. Zenkichi. Uh, his character kind of reminds me of a uh, fusion of Zenigata from Lupin the Third. You know, the cop that follows him around and helps him out, kind of, but also not really. That makes sense. Yeah, that's cool and, uh, if that's. Hasegawa uh, Hezo. Oh, He's a what was it Taish? One of those old rares. He was a cop or city patrol, city patrol or something. He would take criminals and um, recruit them instead of charging them to bring him information from other places so he could go do raids and catch other criminals. So I don't know. Maybe that's what his character is going to be like. I guess. Yeah, that does sound right up that character's alley. Yeah, pretty, pretty tricky. That sounds cool. <clears throat> I like Lupin. Yeah, how about that uh, movie? Go I completely like off topic of everything. The what? What about the who? What? You make that animated movie, the CG one. You know what I'm oh about? yeah, but and they're like using the the style looks ro- super reminiscent of the Ghibli version. I, I like how it looks. The 3D one. Yeah, it looks pretty actually interesting. Although you can see, yeah. Um, what's that guy's name's eyes, which I don't like. He should have. Known. Oh yeah, the, I know who you're talking about. Chigan? Yeah, Chigan. Yeah. No eyes. I'm team no eyes. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, I hate eyes too. Um, the other thing that's getting adapted into a beautiful, you know, piece of media is that Ghost in the Shell uh, shell looks really good. Don't talk to me about this. <laughs> This conversation ends here. Is it going to be as good as a live action movie? Because I love that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen it. Stop being an elitist, Spider. Just learn to love things for what they are. Yeah, why don't you just like accept that people like some things and they should have fun? Let people have fun. Yeah, they can have fun not in my presence. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. <laughs> So speaking of things that are bad, um, yeah, let's go to a much DX2? better game. What, what are, oh, D2 yeah, game. that's a yeah. better game. So D2 did a lot of things since we last uh, talked to all of the like people listening. <laughs> Sorry, mm-hmm. that was phrase weird. Um, they released the Drake Race, which are a group of demons that are all useless. Um, they yes. released the Riders, another group of demons that are all useless. Um, and they added what five more stages or 10 to it's always 10, yeah. So it's yeah, levels 30 to 31 to 40 of the Argate, which is probably one of the it's probably probably one of the only good aspects that they've implemented because the Argate 2 has a lot of story. And although I don't like the story, it is like high effort, I'll just give it that. Yeah, it's like kind of bad execution, good effort. You're like you read the stuff that they write, and it's like, all right, I see what you're going for. This is kind of like juvenile and like unintelligent, but also it's a mobile game, so it's like that's who it's for. Like that's the average per- the average person who reads that might be like, whoa, this is like profound. Yeah, and I have a lot of experience with mobile games, 
this is one of the older ones where when I read it, I was like, whoa, there's a there's something happening, you know? So that's that's good. <laughs> yeah. I still need to catch up, so I don't know how much has changed, but Aragate 2 had some interesting ideas. Same as Aragate 1, but the execution was just... New floors mm, have fine. It's like I like the ideas presented, but it's just not... Yeah. yeah. The best part yeah. of Aragate 2 is you can get huge amounts of magnetite if you win the jackpots. You can get like a mill, and that's good. You can get a lot. There is a good... You ought to find it. There is a good anime reference in the one of the little sub stories with the people you follow. There's no such thing as good and anime existing in the same sentence. Uh true. It is an anime reference. How about we sit we put it <laughs> that way. Can you tell everybody what uh at least what floor it's on? Uh it starts like halfway through and it goes up I think it's the near the end somewhere you get to the reveal of what happens to these people. It's pretty tragic, but kind of funny because you're like, "Oh, that's what they did." Okay. Oh, I remember. Yeah, I saw a picture. Yeah, of that. If, yeah. <laughs> if you've read about it, you probably know. Yeah, you probably know what it is. Yeah. I for that. I I've went through most of it without actually reading the story because, like, I really abhor the writing. It's very, 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 very repugnant to me. So, just trying to like go through it is frustrating. So I'd rather stop. <laughs> so I just don't. Yeah. We've talked about this before. I wonder how much of that is actually just the translation. Because a lot of yeah. it seems so wooden and like, st- like stiff and weird. And it's like, I don't think that the original stuff was written to be like that. It's so such weird. Like, the one guy uh... goes like, do you like horror films? It's like, why don't you like write that in a way? It's like, hey, you like horror? Like, that's like a much more natural way of saying that. Like he wouldn't form yeah. it. Excuse me. Do you enjoy horror films? It's like no, <laughs> no like fifteen. What if eighteen year old or whatever is going to say that? It doesn't make well, any I mean, sense. Yeah, all the little flavor text is pretty bizarre. It's it is kind of written by like it, it's it seems like it's written by people who don't know how people talk. Yeah, you're right. I never really thought yeah. about it that way. I just thought it's bad. But it's probably done quickly. It could just be right. bad too. Yeah. Yeah, um, I mean they still have typos like the trophy or the um the the title you get for using Pixie, <laughs> like the protagonist with Pixie, you get like you have to use it a certain number of times, and then if you do, you get a a title and the the word Pixie, you know the the famous demon who's so famous that they're also the quest giver now. That demon's name is spelled incorrectly, P I X Y, and yeah, it's been that y. way. For- been that way since they included that title. <laughs> so. Impressive. So um that's besides, a cool Yeah. So they're doing so the anniversary is coming up, the Christmas thing is coming up, and the I don't know if they do something for New Year, but that's also also fast approaching. They've added Neko Shogun, so the coolest cat, one of the only things that happens in the new persona games that's of value is that those games all have Neko Shogun and Neko yeah. Shogun's a good cat, you know. This game is actually garbage. First off, he's cool. <laughs> he's, sorry he's, about that. he's sort of always bad. I think in five he was okay. He had size, yeah. I think so. He's pretty cool. But um, yeah, he's actually yeah, he's, usable in in Persona Five. But uh, he seems like he's probably bad in D two. But he looks cool. It's a good. I, I like how they're doing some of these, like turning them into three D models, like the new Drake. Yeah. Yim, and then also they're, they're adding the worst. Yeah, don't interrupt me. Okay, so Yim, like I never, I, you can see it in the old designs. You can see the silhouette of his head in the jellyfish, but in the three D version, you really get to see like there's like a dude in there. It's fucked up. <laughs> cool, I like it. Yeah, that shit's tight. Nidhogg looks good. They all look good. It's just they're terrible. Their abilities are trash and. The the rider's faces look kind of weird, but other than that, yeah, yeah, a lot of the skeletons look bizarre in this game. Matador looks kind of janked up. They don't look like conical skeletons; they just look like skeletons. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So other things that are coming up, like the they might put in. They've been talking about revamping, like not revamp, but put in panels for old old like four star demons, like Beelzebub and stuff. 
So that might be tight. They might they have did some sweet. old panels too. They did uh, Asherah's and I think it was. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anata's? Ananta? What did I say that name? Ananta. It's still garbage. The, yeah, and the wrong. Yeah. yeah. It's still very bad. And it might even be worse. Although, I don't know. They added stuff to it. They didn't it's not it. worse. It's just, it's just still bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They added. Yeah, I thought they reduced the one like minus percent damage thing. But, um,. Yeah, it's it's still the worst shit ever. Um, you know what my favorite edition is? What? The the Mothman plushie. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, that was tight. Yeah, somewhere in the story, for anyone who doesn't know, there's these two new antagonists. One of which is a little kid, which, whatever. But she carries a Mothman plush with her, which should be merchandise. It looks uh, fantastic. I want to make one. Exactly yeah. like that. I, I, I'm I kind of mad that it, is, it doesn't exist. It's weird that there's no um, Mothman merch, really, in general, is considering how popular he is. There's, there's, there's Choo Choo Lane merch. There's Alice merch. There's Mara merch, which, you know, those are all, like, top five demons. But where is yeah. the Mothman merch? Mothman? in top 10 too isn't he oh i think he's yeah i think he's either top 10 or at least top 25 he would have to be it'd be a sin otherwise although i mean he got a featured he got featured on the new design stuff um for uh what was it it was like the redesign for it was doys frost and then he did the yeah he did the mothman redesign little thing yeah he did he's it's a little bit more graphic yeah, we gotta get. I, some I of love that. that one. Yeah, 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 we gotta get that one. That'd be tight. He made the head less wide too. It's a little bit more rounder and cuter, which is good because Mothman is supposed to be the most adorable thing that you could fathom in human existence. So I he think... sort of wasn't originally. I don't think like in the older games he kind of looks scary. His <laughs> eyes are like really bright and like alien, and like his expression is really dull and like stupid. But in like in I, I don't know where the turning point was, but in five especially, like when you knock him down, he's so like helpless and silly looking. I, I think as his popularity grew, the um, the style they drew grew. <laughs> wow, that didn't even make sense, but you know what I mean. Uh, sort of vaguely. So like they just they just tried to adapt him to be more likable, kind of like um, kind of like Jack Frost. He went from being. A bizarre chubby guy to being very thin and lean and ready to do his thing. Yeah. Yeah. After redrawing a design over and over, it's hard to not to revise it. Yeah. Like super, especially, yeah. Especially Jack Frost, because I know that Kaneko wanted to redesign him, but it's, it is what it is. Um, with Mothman, I, I think that his original design, that it was, it was like frightening, but it was frightening in a good way because it, to me, it there's always like this beautiful fine line with some of the um, Mega Ten designs where they're both cute and creepy, and I love that original. Like it's so creepy, but it's also like adorable, right? Like a real moth, you know. Like when you see a real moth, you're like ah, but you're also like ooh. Depends on how close you are. I think the proximity matters for real life moths. Oh yeah, true. Another thing that we didn't mention is uh, Frost Ace is going to be yeah, we kinda, in the game. He's he's going to be part of the new Christmas event because usually before the first year, I think it was um, Halloween. Yeah. yeah, Halloween was like special uh, Jack Pyro Jack, and then Christmas was special um, Jack Frost, and then they lump both of them into Halloween, and everyone's like, "What? Why did they do that?" Turns out, putting Frost Ace in. He's going to be a five-star, I think. He's going to be a big boy. Oh, yeah. nice. I don't have Common to level him up too much. Yeah. Yeah. Um, maybe Glib can talk about him because, like, to me, Frost Ace is the worst of the Frost variants, but <laughs> it's his favorite, so go ahead. See, this is what you get. You get, you get, <laughs> you get Shadow Realm trying to diss him before. Look at you. <laughs> it's fucked up, man. Right? That's dirty. Frost you Ace can't just like that. There's no better boy. Best boy, it's common it's better than Mothman. Though. Mothman sucks. He's ugly. He's always ugly. He's ugly now. Whoa. He's All trash. right. Cut this man's mic. 
Kick, kick him out. You've had too much. <laughs> if Ross State doesn't have innate ice pierce, I'm going to cry on stream live. He's not going to. You're going to be sad, man. He's not. I know he isn't. No, I'm sorry. Yeah. He might have so, one ability that has innate, but only the ability does, not him innately. Have, have they revealed anything about him besides the fact that he's coming? No, it's just a hint. It's just a... It's, they haven't it, revealed it yet. They haven't even said it's yeah. him yet. It's, it's, well, it could be different, but no, it's they're, they're, extremely they're, obvious from the hints. Yeah, because they say that if they no, it can't be because they because they use a singular. You know, Frost Five is five Frost. In Japan too, I, I, saw, I saw that. I noticed that, but I, didn't, I wasn't sure if they like oh like I'm or something. Yeah, in in the Japanese version, yeah, they they the Japanese hint it's it's singular. It's not a group of people. So it's definitely Frost Ace, and all the Japanese people were saying it's Frost Ace, <laughs> and since all the Japanese fans are the old like people who have been since. Since Mega Ten existed, so I kind of erred on the side of caution to believe them. They even they also hinted at a couple more demon um, variants coming. Gurita, who ca- no one cares if that's going to be it, but that's one of the ones that people are speculating. And then some the other one, theory. Yeah, so it's going to be Gurita and what was the other one? <laughs> it's probably, it's probably uh, for Avian, it's either going to be Fang Fang Huang or Gurita, and for Fury, it's going to be a. Uh... Wukong or Susano. Susano? Yeah, and I've seen I've seen more people say it's going to be Susano, Susano O O O, but who cares? Because those Susano. two demons suck. <laughs> what Isn't Wukong or Pablo? Know. His his his, uh, his his other design. What is his other design? Is Devil Children design? <laughs> I think that was about Devil. Isn't the one where he's like a shirtless dude or something stupid? There's so many. Like he's like he's not, he's not like the burnt man that he is in this one. He's like he's like a just a dude, kind of like Odin. What if they bring us alternate Masakado? <laughs> I would love that. A big rock guy that'd be tight. They, they oh, the other the one. The, no, the um the oh. Kabuki one. Oh yeah, we posted that before. That ugly as fuck. That it's based on you. <laughs> Don't you dare say that about me. I'm pretty. I'm not like him. <laughs> this is how every Persona game starts. You say I'm not like him, and then you say it's not me, and then you have to <sighs> fight him. Have to fight Masakado? I don't know about that. that. Sounds hard. If they do use a Wukong um, variant, just don't use the Persona Five one, please. I will like. Well, stop they won't. Playing. They haven't used any Persona designs. Yeah, but who knows? It it only takes one bad apple. It it would be weird if they never ever even had like a one crossover thing with P five, don't you think? No. Yeah, not that they should do it, but it would be weird for them not leverage that. You know what I'm saying? From a it's business the right perspective, crossover. And As a business pro- man. there could be other reasons why they wouldn't do it, like. Uh... I guess because this is not Atlas doing it, maybe they they're maybe that's why they're choosing a lot of really obscure demons, or demons that don't make sense. <laughs> I.e., uh, Bodyconian, you know, everyone's favorite. Yes, that was pretty cool, though. An important designs. Uh, I can see that one being important later on, but uh, not for this game. Also, I can't find another <laughs> version of Wu Kong besides. Those the devil children, the one that we have, the alternate color of the one that we have, and the Persona Five one. Huh. But you know, I'm not a real fan, so it could be something else. I, I don't know. But, Isn't there just three? As far as I know, it's only three. Okay, so then I'm right. Thank you. Maybe the maybe it will be Susan and Oh. And it'll be the one where he has a seven branch sword. Doesn't he already have that too, though? Does he? Yeah, I don't. I don't they remember have, I what's. What his sword is like about? barbs all over it. Yeah, that's yeah. a seven branch sword. Yeah, that's Dukes too. He's yeah. He has the really long hair. He's floating. He's almost nude, except for a weird little robe he wears, and his skin oh. is totally dark. Oh, I, was, I, was, I mean, I, I thought the I thought I didn't know if he had that in the um the D D two. The one that I'm talking about, he's standing up, he's buff, he has a ugly thing yeah, on his yeah. head. That's going to be the alternate design if it's him, for sure. It's He's just a dude. 
Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, he, looks, but, he looks like uh, like Frank Zappa or something. Oh, he doesn't have a beard. Never mind. Yeah. I'm going to drop some it. trivia because this is like one of the only things I remember from my art history class. The Seventh Branch Sword was apparently a gift from Korea back when um, Japan wasn't even Japan yet, before before they stole all the Korean culture. Um, <laughs> Korea, no, like for real. Whoa. <laughs> that's, what, that's one of the things that's happened, which is why they, they don't want to ever... It, um, study a lot of the old Japanese uh, like anything because they don't want to prove that Korea had a major influence on Japanese culture. It's a weird thing. But the Seven Branch Sword was a gift from Korea to the country Wa, which was Japan before they were called Japan. So that's a, how, do they, that's, how do they make it? I don't know. Some dumb way probably because it's really ugly. <laughs> it seems very impractical. Uh, it's supposed to be ridiculously sharp. They said something like I remember the myth or something being like they um they had it in a river or something and it was able to cut um a leaf just by it, it touching it or something dumb. I don't remember. It was it's it's a thing. My anime. Well, yeah. how do you think anime gets started, Glib? Someone from Korea yeah. makes it and then Japan. <laughs> yep. Korea invented anime. Thank you. That's a not to Thank you, on. Mr. Korea. I'll, I'll I'll let you guys know what the the grand total of people who unsub after like listening to my dumb opinions. <laughs> All right. Speaking of uh, Korea, yeah, uh, I I guess Rim. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> yeah, same thing. That's that. Thing. The Persona so, Five uh, edition. Oh yeah, we forgot to talk about the Persona. So Persona Five Royale is also releasing in Asia. Its release date is way better than ours because it comes in February. And what it's supposedly rumored to have a English subtitle, or I might be wrong. Spider, do you know? Yeah, the rumor is it has the English subtitles, but it's um... just a quick addendum to the podcast. There is not a English dub or sub in the Asian release of Persona 5 Royal. The dub is Japanese. So the Asia version has Korean, no wait, Chinese and English subs apparently. And then there's a Korean version with Korean subs. Hmm. And if you buy the um, Chinese special edition, it comes with a shirt instead of a mask. And I think that's probably a better thing because you get a lot more like utility out of getting a new shirt because you can use that as a rag to dry your car. You can um, put that like in place of a like welcome mat if you don't have one. There's a there's you a cover up of- your face so you don't get the uh, tear gas in your eyes or mouth. <laughs> wow! <laughs> don't yeah. that's in China. <laughs> I don't see what the problem is. Well, I mean, you can use the you can use the mask to protect your eyes from tear gas too, kind of. No, 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 no. no. See, the no, mask probably is made of cloth. You can use now. the cloth as a filter. All you uh, people who disagree with a certain <laughs> group of other people, certain Winnie the Pooh like culture. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, no one's gonna shit on him for that. Okay. Okay, <laughs> but Aegis Rim released and it sells the cream. Um, yeah, three thirty-five thousand uh, units sold in what the first was was that is, yeah. is this is this the actual release day or is this over the a period of time? Over a week. This is the first week. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, that's, um, not their worst, but definitely not their best. Really? Yeah, that sounds bad. What's the scope of this game? What is it? It's a mecha with a bunch of high schoolers with time travel and aliens. And wow, I mystery. instantly hate this. And also, would to get in the robot, you have to be naked. Just Yes. You have <laughs> oh. to be stark naked. <laughs> Alright, this sounds great. Never mind. I changed my mind. It's also a tower. Isn't that how, uh, what's the one anime? Uh... If you're well, gonna say I hey, Alien, uh, I'm gonna no, that beat the shit out of you. <laughs> Which one? The, the one that's like Eva, darling in the Franks. Isn't that how that goes? Isn't that? Um, oh, I don't it, know. what did you say? To get in it or no. something? Is that what they did? I haven't seen it. I'm just wondering. I, no, I what know. game? Did you, I didn't hear. Darling in the Franks. 
Darling and the Franks? It's like, oh no, like I don't watch thing. anything that sounds bad. And that sounds <laughs> I haven't seen it either. I'm just wondering. <laughs> He's baited you the whole time. He knew about it. He heard of it. No, I've, 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 got, I've heard that. That's the fan service part, but not the nudity part. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I was looking at the sales for other games, but I, I don't really. I didn't really look too deep, but the one of the games that I recall being very good from Vanillaware was the Muramasa Rebirth game. I think that's a port, right? Or is it a just completely new title for Muramasa? Uh, that um, sounds really familiar. Was that the Vita one originally? Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. It's, it's and a they really made a good game. Aiden Sphere later, right? Oh yeah, they also yeah same people, but. Muramasa sold like fifty thousand, like, and that's like globally. So, so yeah, it's not too bad for just Japan. It just sounds bad because you're, you know, you're used to big numbers. When like when you think about, oh, Persona Five Royale sold like this many units in its opening day. Like it's it's just a very different world. So I it, it sounds horrible. But to Vanillaware, who only has like what twenty five staff or something like that, selling that many units for as as however much it costs to produce is probably not that bad. Unless... It, it debuted the same as the the Marzmaza Rebirth, uh, debuted at thirty nine k. This one is thirty five. Oh, really? So yeah, and that that's the remake of Muramasa, I think, the second release. I'm trying to find it, but there was some something that some someone who's like a big name had mentioned, like a, a big Japanese developer guy had said in a weird way that he doesn't care what happens to Atlas as long as Vanillaware can still make games. <sighs> do you guys know who I'm talking about? No. But that's no not clue. even Atlas. Atlas just publishes for them. No, yeah, but there, it was some. It's, it was a guy who was like popular for saying really controversial things as a Japanese game developer. Oh, who knows? Damn. Okay, well, I mean, now I feel like I, I, I feel dumb for bringing up something that like can't even verify. <laughs> but just know that someone said something that was interesting, and I can't tell you who it is. It's a good podcast episode. Um, yes, it, struggling to remember things and then just really not getting anywhere with it. But that being said, like the whole sales, like figures, and trying to put it in perspective, do you think that it's still worth like pursuing? Like, if you wanted as a consumer to buy the game, like Spider, because I feel like you're the only, you're the one who knows the most about the game. Oh well, I don't know. I'd have to play it honestly. I don't think my computer can run it, but (laughs) (laughs) it looks like something I think would be all right. I don't know about the story. It seems kind of eh, but the gameplay looks pretty fun. So it's definitely something I'm interested in. I wasn't too interested in uh, Dragon's Crown or Odin Sphere, but this one is more up my alley, I think. Yeah, and this one did well in terms of reviews because it did get a 38 out of 40 um, for Famitsu, which doesn't really mean anything because it's Famitsu, but also some people value that. So it being near perfect from that, um, that I guess, magazine is kind of a big deal. <laughs> so I haven't seen anything negative said even by like people who did buy it because I'm looking at like, the Amazon reviews and it's not overly negative like Persona 5 Royale's was. Well, the expectations there are a bit too high, I think, for most consumers. Yeah, that's fair, <laughs> but <laughs> it's it's just one of those things that's it's it's kind of bizarre because I really did think that it was going to sell more than this because Atlas Japan has been pushing this relentlessly since they decided that it was going to actually happen because for a long time it was considered vaporware, and then suddenly they just started promoting it like nonstop all of this year. <laughs> Well, if it does a global release, it might hit 150k. Maybe that would be nice. Yeah, um, what one could only hope. I think that it's. I mean, I'm still interested in buying it. Even my biggest complaint is the the weird nudity robot thing. For some reason, that bothers me a lot. 
Yeah, and the portraits are pretty big with it too. They don't show anything, but you, it's very obvious. It's like no, yeah, moon. It's Sailor Moon transformation tier. They do this or weird less thing. Subtle. They do the, They did this weird thing where um, Alice Japan was like post, like promoting it by showing some of the bonuses and stuff that you get. And I'm like, I don't want to see this like weird, basically naked Japanese girls in robots. Like, like, why would that be something I want on my like PlayStation as a like theme? That's lame. Yeah, that poster was. Oh yeah, it was a poster. Sorry, but yeah, yeah, Ugh. that was something. Gotta like, get those horny purchases. There's a lot of money out there fueled by the horn. Oh, they're uh, they're targeting both audiences, both the guys and the girls. So there's that. Yeah, I mean that's good. Oh, there is a there is a theme too. Okay, I thought I was crazy, but there's like this horrible theme. But um, <laughs> yeah, just just know that it's coming, and you should buy four copies. Four copies? No, I'm I'm good. Got to help them out. <laughs> So I guess what else do we have to talk about? SMT nine? Yeah. Um someone figured out how to insert the text into the game, the translation. Yeah, that I mean, I don't have a whole lot to say about it besides if they actually do it, that's good. Um my understanding is that uh localizing or um translating for the Xbox is pretty difficult, like the hacking and stuff. Yeah, he's doing the hacking. Someone already did the translation. He's using their um, their it's the neutral and neutral route and the chaos light route. So he's got scripts for both of those. Oh, okay. Um, we have to, but isn't that on the original Xbox SMT nine? Yeah, yeah. It's, is there a way to emulate that? I thought that was like a weird, hard thing to do. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I don't really know. I just don't know. I don't know anything about that. I know I saw someone playing Jet Set Radio once on it, but that's about it. Oh, nice. Uh, For this one, you're probably going to need a modified Xbox if this translation does come out. All right. Which is probably like, I don't know. If you do it yourself, probably pretty cheap. Yeah. I was looking at modding my Dreamcast so I can get an HDMI cable in there, but it's kind of like way too much money and effort. Yeah. But maybe one day. Yeah. um, I'm kind of excited because I like SMT9 a lot, but that's that's like, that's the extent of it is SMT9. We haven't gotten any other updates, I guess, in terms of the other look, uh, the other fan translations. I haven't really seen Tom tweeting about like the progress. My understanding is that at least they're at least they're halfway done, but um, the games like Gaiden Tensei and a couple of the dev- dev- Devil Children games that are supposed to be translated are getting there. There's not really much to be said um, about that, though. So I, I don't know. Just wanted to kind of just say something about translating because we brought up SMT nine. It'll take time, but it'll get there. Tom's pretty quick too for translations. Yeah. Quick and good quality. He, yeah, he's he reminds me of. I mean, he just has like a good way of um, translating that doesn't have all the uh... awkwardness. Yeah. Okay. So it's yeah. Exactly. It's it's like the opposite of the D two translation. <laughs> wow. Where maybe he should work for a Sega, but you know, just a theory. A theory. So I, I think we should get into the questions now. We didn't get a All whole right. lot of questions this time around, but we got we got a couple of spicy ones that we can go yeah. through. We're multimedia now too. Usually we just do Facebook and Twitter, but someone delved into the the hive cesspit that is Discord. Why are you using white Discord? What uh, is wrong with you? 
No, he's using night mode Discord for me. At least what I can see. Whatever. Oh. No, yeah. I, no, the other yeah, ones, the other ones are the stupider social. That's from Facebook and Twitter, I think. Yeah, you can, okay, you have, isn't, was... there, isn't there dark mode for those two things? I don't use them because I, I like light mode. Probably. What is, what is the benefit of light mode or dark mode? Someone tell me. Uh, if not you tearing really like, your eyeballs out? Yes. For a lot better for your eyes, but I'm not sure which, one, which one's which. Dark mode, oh. for sure. All right, anyway, let's stop debating this. First question comes in from Spencer Presley at Torchwood4SP on Twitter. He asks, why don't more people recognize the P4G anime Christmas special as the best holiday special ever? Uh, Spider, can you tell us the answer to this question? Persona 4 Gold. I've never seen this. Anime Christmas special. I don't even celebrate Christmas, so. No? (laughs) Oh, okay. Uh, Does anyone know what this is? I've never seen any of the Persona animes or I've only... The only Christmas special I have ever like experienced that's Persona is the Trinity Souls um, CD, drama CD. It's a Christmas special. But aside from that, I've, I've never done any of the other ones. And the drama CD for Tr- Trinity Souls is actually good. It's, it complements the anime well, but like I wouldn't say it was like the best. And Persona 4G has no way of ever being the best at anything, so... <laughs> You say that, and yes, you dress like Marie every day. I actually, I only really use my uh, messenger bag when I'm trying to carry like things the besides my, like, Okay, <laughs> die. That fall out of the ground. I've I don't, I've dropped a lot of things, but I haven't dropped poems. So yeah, that you know of, people are finding them and reading them. Like, what the fuck is this? Yeah, I Why can't written... I skip this? What is going I, on? When I would write poems, I would do it on DeviantArt. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's what that is. Someone stumbled upon and found it. They had to read the whole thing. That snapshotted right. somewhere on the internet. I hope we're gonna find them. We're gonna find that cash one day. All yeah. right. Anyway, fuck you. Uh, all right. Next question comes in from Ember at Kevin six zero four nine on Twitter. Writes in asking, "Are your parents fans of the SMT franchise yet? If not, what would it take to convince them?" Uh, Glib, can you tell us what your parents you probably feel about SMT? Parents. Yeah. Uh, probably brainwashing. Okay. <laughs> so I guess it's a no to the part of the first part. The second part is brainwashing. It's a very law law question. Very they know about idea. it, but I don't, I don't think they really care. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Not gamers. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. yeah. Uh, my parents don't play video games. Well, my dad plays like Resident Evil and stuff, but it's his gaming like his gaming taste is literally Resident Evil or like basketball games. <laughs> so That's he, cool. So, so he he's never gonna play um, Megami Tensei games. Um, uh, and when when he has seen me play it, he had no like positive or negative reaction. It's kind of it's similar to like when he saw me playing Final Fantasy VII, except then he was disappointed, which makes sense because it's not a good game. But damn, get him! But my Those mom remind me actually. Oh wait, for right, go ahead. Oh no, but my mom would never play because she would. She's not um, able to experience religious figures outside of the religious context and not be offended, so she would not ever. Yeah, how does she feel about Black Maria? <laughs> yeah, that's the same with mine as well. My dad, though, he he really likes Final Fantasy VII and Chrono Cross. Oh, uh, have you disowned him? Oh. <laughs> I think he. I don't think he'd like Megaton very much, but I think he'd like Radiant Historia. Oh yeah, Radiant Historia is good. Yeah, my parents would not like either of them at all. My mom has never played any game at all. She plays board games sometimes with us, but. Uh... We get together for the holidays or something like that. My dad actually used to used to game. He used to be a gamer. He used to play uh, Hexen uh, on PC, and he played a uh, Duke Nukem sixty four with us sometimes. <laughs> My dad did that too. Yeah, yeah, hell yeah. He was like, "That's the best game." <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's a very dad game. 
Uh, yeah, they would not be able to stand in JRPG. They don't really like reading that much, unless it's kind of like a pulpy book. Uh, and I don't think they like anime. <laughs> pretty sure. <laughs> uh, so yeah, big nose all around. Maybe you were gonna say something. Oh, okay. So I forgot to say that my dad is a gamer, and he has like an Xbox, Whoa. like original Xbox. I was debating giving him my PS2 and all my Mega Ten stuff for it. So normally when I play Mega Ten stuff, I just emulate it. He's not already on it. So mm. okay, yeah. Get, introduce yeah. him. See if he's interested. He'll probably hate it and not want to. He'll probably. Be yeah. I'll be. Uh, okay, we got two questions. Who would win in a fight, Neb's Neb or Glib's dad? Me or Glib's dad? What kind of questions is this? <laughs> what? Why is that even equal? <laughs> what? So, okay, did you mean my dad or his dad? Because no, it sounds like you, said... you are his dad. <laughs> I am his dad? No. <laughs> you versus Okay, versus Okay, okay. Uh I would I would open up with a wild haymaker and just go for it. See what happens. You know what I'm saying? I'd go like Yakuza and start picking up bikes and throwing them at him and stuff like that. All right, that makes sense. Yeah, it's a gamer move right there, bro. Yeah, yeah, it's a gamer gamer move. Start picking up motorcycles one handed. Okay, uh, back to the dark depths of Discord to get some questions. Uh, first one comes in from Mister Chief, uh, who writes in asking opinion on the Western release of P five R and if you'll pick it up or not. Uh, oh, I guess mind. wait, do we come out of the PS4? first half? A what? We talk about the DLC for P5R or no? I forgot about that. I think we did. It's sort of about the cost of it a little bit. Um, Last we time made we fun of. No, we did this time because we made fun of the um, the Strange Journey DLC and some of the other DLC, right? Or is that not? For yeah, Royale? I mean, there's there's probably other ones. I know that one of the big DLC things for Royale is that you can buy all of the Kasumi versions of the other people's DLC because the, the old DLC has all the different Mega Ten things. Um but you know there's no Kasumi version. So now you just pay extra so you can have Kasumi in addition to the Featherman costume, the Demonica costumes, and I think there's one more new edition. Oh, they're dancing new moon or whatever edition costumes. Yeah. Whatever those rhythm games are dumb. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I'll take a look. I'll, um, it's, and I'm not, I'm not like hugely committed either way or whatever. We'll see what happens. People say it's really cool. and There's lots of cool stuff. Then sure. Why not? I got some time to do it again. So why not? Anyone else going to pick it up? Uh, eventually. Sure. I'm not in a rush. I'm in a rush. <laughs> it's going to be status like GameStop right now for the next three months. Yeah. There was a guy. Well, I mean, this is off topic. Can I, could I talk about a sports related topic? It's not about China, is it? No, it's about football. Cool. There was this like loser guy who decided to stay on his roof until his team won. <laughs> And he was there for like at least a month, I think. But they won like over the weekend, so he's free from that shackle. <laughs> Wait, is this local to you, or is this somewhere no, in the country? I'm somewhere in in America. I forget which team, but I just remember seeing that like news article. And he, I mean, he have, he obviously had to have some money because he was able to make a little like fort on his roof, for, so he can actually just live in there. And <laughs> yeah, he just decided he was going to live on his roof until his team won. And the specifications were that they just had to win any game. <laughs> and they didn't for like a month. <laughs> so, what is he, a Browns fan? What's going on? Actually, no, they're good now, I think. Oh, that kind of football. Oh, yeah, sorry. Oh, is it American or is it Spanish? Yeah, yeah. Okay. American. Real football. <laughs> <laughs> Human Who has time football. For this, Once you got a job, what are you, what are you doing, man? <laughs> like, what? what? <laughs> That's crazy. I don't know. 
sports fans or just JRPG fans. Okay, now I remember. It's the Bengals. That's the team where the guy... That explains it. Oh, there you go. Yeah, he's from Ohio. That sounds like real crackhead behavior. I if mean, you're from Ohio, you're a drug addict, all right? <laughs> 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 Next question. Comes from GG Eases of G, a bunch of Chinese stuff. Uh, right, so saying, question for podcasts. When are you going to get better hosts? Um, uh, probably I don't no know, motherfucker. When are you going to get a better avatar? You sonic ass looking motherfucker. <laughs> 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 Bitch. <laughs> Next question. Next question. All right. Uh, this anime guy on Twitter writes in. His name's UT at Alt Trainer. Out of the removed mechanics that were in the original SNES games, what would you like them to add back to SMT5? So, lost mechanics lost to time, preserved in yeah. amber in the 16 bit era. What do you want to see return? The roof. Um, this, I mean, so this one left the 16 bit era, but I still really like it. Is I like um, the whole magnetite being required for you to keep your demons out <laughs> to me it's it's not hard but i like when people struggle and one of the things that people typically struggle with is the whole magnetite management so bring it back so then people could actually have a real reason to complain about smt being difficult because keeping magnetite requires a certain level of intelligence yeah that could be a good challenge mechanic. It might be too much to implement just for a challenge because people just yeah. get mad at it and not play it. But So I think that it could be cool if it was... So I don't personally endorse ever go, doing a hard mode of a game, but if they did do a hard mode, that could be the one of the additions to the difficulty is that you now have to manage your mag. That could be good, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, for me, um, I was brainstorming this earlier, and I thought of one. Uh, I want to see bigger parties. We haven't had big parties in a while. Um, and I want to see big parties. Uh, get partners out of here. Fuck partners. Big parties. 6v6, 8v8. Just everyone spamming AoE and breaking everyone down to pieces, and every turn takes 30 minutes because everyone has to take like 100 hits. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's what I want the entire game so please put that in uh, um, how about you spider I just want them to get rid of partners and have them as human party members because I absolutely hate the AI I think it either coddles you when you're trying when you're like um, if you pick Asahi and she heals you and all that or you pick some other nuker and they just kill everything yeah or in regular 4 where they just like hit enemy resistances it's like okay cool yeah thank Walter. you it's like are you an idiot i've already revealed the stats like come on man like the or demon is covered in fire don't throw fire at him that one side quest in four where you have uh what's her name the big sister uh, character who's for a ah nozomi isn't that her name nozomi yeah nozomi oh right right their first quest you get her on and she has she attacks that one boss that has a wind resistance and she just only has wind spells that's great well that's a good game design actually that's that's that teaches you about trusting others to do that don't don't trust anyone besides your own fists (laughs) you have to take her though you don't get a choice Police will never help you. Police will never help you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, Glib, what do you think? What what do you want to see? Do you want to see a, a new version of the sloth dungeon? Because there's so many good there's so many good things that were totally forgotten and removed on purpose. Which of bring back the awesome everything? Ones? The new gameplay okay. sucks. Press turn was a mistake. Third person <laughs> okay. exploration a mistake. Bring back everything. Okay, first oh. person <laughs> dungeon crawling. That that actually, yep. Okay. Yep. That's my serious answer, actually. I do like first person a lot. And I'll so bring that back. Or at least make if it an one had better graphics, it'd be the best game ever. No cap. Okay. What is what does no cap mean for the non zoomers? It's like, like he no didn't lie. put a hat on, I think. Oh. <laughs> it means like no <laughs> lie. Okay. It means no what? 
Basically means no lie. No, no lie. lie. Okay. Did so you just say serious? Or, that would be or Dio like... Mama. <laughs> he also says Zoomer shit like Kino. So I mean, what what do you expect? Kino. Uh, okay. One last question from Facebook it comes from Clint McKee. Writes in asking. Anyone feel like trying to finish an SMT Nuzlocke challenge in the span of a year? Uh, Leroux, why don't you explain to the people at home what a Nuzlocke challenge is or constitutes? So, Nuzlocke challenge, named after the popular Pokemon Nuzlocke, right? His name is no, it's not. Nuz- <laughs> Nuz- it's, not, it's, not it's not. So far, so good. <laughs> I'm I sorry. You, I don't I like you, bro. that. I got you. Go ahead. It's Go from, ahead. It's from a comic. It's from. It's from a fan comic, and the person they they made a challenge, and the challenge is named after the Nuzly, the Pokemon you're looking for. Oh, okay. The Nuzly, they named it. But the rules are basically you have to catch one Pokemon per route. If Pokemon faints, it dies, and uh, they nickname everything. I think that's I think that's all of the rules. There's more, so, but it's like person yeah. Person. To translate that to SMT, so if I was gonna answer this question and you know, do it without, like, memes or being sarcastic. Like, it doesn't appeal to me. Like, frankly, I don't like the idea of challenges. Um, SMT is not a challenging series. Self-imposed challenges is not really fun to me, but I hope someone does that. Nar- Gnarly did a challenge the other week or whatever. He can do this one, I I would hope. And that's all I have to say about that. One year yeah. seems too long to me. Like, maybe like a month or something. One year is kind of, it's a really long time. It depends on the game. I would I would say that this is probably not possible in a game like 4 or... Well, actually, no. 4 and 4A, you probably could do it. But you probably couldn't do it in a game like Nocturne. Yeah, it seems sort of, like, overly restrictive conceptually. Because, like, especially in SMT, like, if you get ambushed and you get wiped, like, is that... Do you just start all the way over? Do you delete your save file? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay, that doesn't seem fun at all. That game seems terrible. Over, yeah. That's not how the game's designed. Yeah, well, I, I mean, yeah. I, I get like trying to like squeeze life out of the games that you've played too many times and for way too long. Uh, I understand, but it's not the way. That's I think not that it, chief. I think that the thing to consider is that with Pokemon there's a certain level of you can basically use whatever Pokemon you want and beat the Elite Four or whatever the Elite Four analogous is for your respective Pokemon game. But for Shin Megami Tensei, it doesn't translate. You can't, you, you mean, I mean, you could recruit a demon that you get towards towards the end of the game for the end boss, but it doesn't mean it's going to be like the, the best demon for that exact spot. You know, there's this is this is one of those systems where it's, not fun. It's, it actually reduces the level of fun that even increasing the difficulty would do to the point where it's absurd. For me, you can do it. Focus and team composition and SMP for this to work well. Yeah, yeah. What about you, Spider? Would you do the 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 Smith Nuzlocke? No, I I don't really care about like challenges or and the mechanics aren't their draw for me so playing a game over and over is mm, i'm not getting much out of it at that point unless yeah. i'm exploring a new route or some of the story i i, I don't care <laughs> yeah i even like mechanics. the combat and stuff and like the idea of coming up with my own rules to do it or following someone else's external rules is like no it's not interesting. So before we stop answering questions, I actually have a question that I'm going to ask you guys. That was the last one. So this is a good way to cap it off. Yeah. So a very interesting uh, question was thrown, or a very, a very interesting uh, concept was thrown my way about the way that the games are written in terms of their plot and story. In your in your opinions, which mainline Megami Tensei title that you've played has the least, I guess, written story the 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 game where there's not a whole lot of plot going on? I guess 
what would you say out of the mainline game? So that's it. That's anything from Megami Tensei one all the way up to Shin Megami Tensei four apocalypse. How does if count? Yeah. If, if. counts. Right. <laughs> Was that the question? There you go. Done. Okay. I thought so. I just yeah. I thought so. It was it was, a, it was supposed to be a loaded question, but I knew you guys were gonna say if because it is the actual answer. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Is, I mean that literally like you can say like, oh, the plot is very thin in these games, or I feel like the narrative isn't like it doesn't have the right story beats to get characters from this point to the other. And it's like there is literally I think two uh scenes of like real interaction between the antagonist and the protagonist. And then every of the uh, several dungeons, there's a little bit of dialogue where, like, the bad guy's like, this is why I'm doing this. So, like, all in all, that's, like, seven sentences or whatever of, like, understanding what is going on, why it's going on, who's causing it to happen, where we are. Yeah, it's it's nothing. It's not even okay. that much, to be honest. It's like some of the beginning, some of the end, and in the middle, he just yeah. says, how oh, you suck. Well, I'm counting, like, gone. whenever you see the statue, and the guy's like, oh, I've, this is my, duh, duh, duh. I'm counting that, too. So, like, that might be inflating it. I don't know. But Oh, there's Akira's, too, but still, it's... I oh, yeah, that. I didn't do any of that. Yeah, fuck that. That doesn't right. count. That's not real. He has a slightly different ending, which is something. Stop the fit of the game, Spider. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're going to kick you out. <laughs> I just okay, so that that question I really just wanted to hear you, you guys were, like, were you expecting like a discussion? No, so, so I wouldn't I wouldn't no good you <laughs> I wish I could punch you, but if I, if I tried to hit my screen, it would just break my screen. But I would yeah. hit you hard because yeah, okay. I hope you can hear how mad I am. I'm smiling like in real life, but I'm actually very angry. Yes, the reason why we, we I asked the question is because the person who brought up this concept of having a very light story in Megaton was referring to Nocturne as having almost no story. And what? And mm. it boggled my mind because I was thinking about what. Is this, hold on, is this who I think it is? Oh, I, I don't know. <laughs> oh, okay, never mind. I don't know who it is. Okay, okay, okay. It's it's just some guy on who plays one of the games, not a, not a real game from Mega Ten, but a game. <laughs> okay, interesting. It rhymes with B two. Uh, <laughs> oh right, 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 right. right. But, actually, got it. And it always drives me up the wall because what I think most people are saying is this isn't a character driven story, so therefore I don't care about anything else. Yeah, and it's it's one thing, I think, to be like, okay, well, the story doesn't have that whole thing where the main character is some some huge, strong guy, like a Goku or something, and he's trying to be the best ninja or whatever. It's literally just you're, you're a person, and this bad thing is happening, and you're experiencing it. And there's a lot of subplots, actually, like a huge amount of plot that goes on through Nocturne, and... and one of the things I was thinking is, you know, you know that meme where it's like, like beware of Persona Five fans because they've never played Persona Five. Ah, uh. I feel like that's what people do with Nocturne too, where someone shares oh, a yeah, thing. No. It's definitely yeah, that game is like overrepresented in like the amount of people who actually say that they have played it and liked it and stuff like that. Yeah, like they're Sorry. saying oh, the punching Yahweh memes and stuff like that, and you're like. But, yeah. but yeah, yeah. that doesn't happen. It always gets, it happens like two games. People act like it's every game. But it's like it's it's just one of those things that I was I was thinking about it ever since that this person had brought up the whole concept of Nocturne having like no story. And I'm just like, this is something that I've heard a lot, and it's one of those um like opinions where it's not really opinion formed from experience. They just heard someone say that so many times that they decided that that has to be true. Just like when people go, oh, um, Strange Journey is like one of the hardest games ever. It's tough as nails or, um, you know, you'll you'll get stuck on Matador. Or not Matador. Oh, yeah, Matador or Minotaur. Or, um, yeah. Because Mitra. Yeah, or Mitra because they're so difficult and overbearing and it's impossible to beat. And it's like, no, you just have to play the game normally. So I don't know. I just thought it was interesting. And I appreciate the, the smart actual answer, which was I, the one I would have said um, if... 
So you guys, you guys, you guys are all right. You guys can still be uh, co-hosts with me. That's good. <laughs> wow, you know what makes me mad the most about that is people say that about mm-hmm. Mott. Like, there's, <laughs> like there's, <laughs> there's no way you're really getting out here with the infinite, uh, infinite beast eyes. Like, it's not that hard. He's like, he does like 50 damage, bro. He's, he's buff. It's not that big a deal. Well, I mean, but buffing is <laughs> difficult to remember to do. Um, oh, there are certain people who need to be reminded to use buffs. Certain <laughs> group of individuals. Yeah. By the way, I remember who said. <laughs> no. Well, word for them. Don't say it. <laughs> <laughs> they drop the hardest. To, okay. Never mind. So I remembered, or I looked it up, and I found the person who said the the weird statement about uh, Thirteen Sentinels and Vanillaware. It was Yoko Taro. They did oh, a yeah. game um, that's popular, and they're popular for wearing a weird mask and stuff. Yeah, near, near, near. Yeah, he did near yeah. Automata. Yeah, he, 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 he made one of the horniest designs of all time, just so he could make Watchfield make porn of her and also dress up like her. It's pretty epic, bro. Which is so horny, it goes, it like breaks the meter, and it's like, all right, respect. <laughs> okay, but here's just, here's what he said, just so, just so people don't think that I'm like making up stuff. Vanillaware is like a treasure we must prote- uh, we must all protect. So you should definitely buy Thirteen Sentinels. Even just one more copy sold can make a difference. I usually don't care about whether a game will sell or not. I don't even care if Atlas ends up closing down one day. <sighs> but I definitely don't want Vanillaware to disappear. Japan needs Vanillaware. And... <laughs> You putting the oh, or talking about his like thirst, it makes a lot of sense when you think about 13. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny too because I just saw I saw the design again when he posted. <laughs> that's, that's pretty crazy. It's, it's, it's kind of you know, he had a, a video too for uh, when P5 released about P5 killing near Automata. <laughs> Good, one game is better than the other, and that's just how it goes. Maybe he's just mad because, yeah, his game was like blown away by a better game. Okay. Just, just, <laughs> now you're going to piss off all the near fans? God damn. Yeah, the people who started with this podcast are going to be like, he hates Persona 5. And then the people who end are going to be like, he hates near too, but less than Persona 5 or more than Persona 5. I've been too many I'm, hot takes for one show. Yeah, this is, we got we to gotta shut well, this, this is, down. This is, this is the Christmas the special. It's coming out a little bit before Christmas, may, or, or probably earlier, because I want to do a custom thumbnail. Um, I think that's really it for everything. <laughs> Unless you guys have anything else yeah. you want to say. I don't celebrate Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> I celebrate so, Christmas uh, every day of my life. Okay. Okay. Eggnog. Pound a, pound a carton every morning. Eggnog <laughs> is disgusting. It's one of the, Eggnog are, is great. You must not be of a color. Um, <laughs> you must not have color in your skin. Whoa! Gonna you gonna melanin shame me? Yes, you motherfucker. That's hey, Glib, do you, right. you drink my eggnog, Glib? I do not. See, <laughs> Spider, morally Spider wrong. Eggnog? What you're doing? Uh, n- no, I don't buy it. I-, I will drink it if it's there, but I don't buy it. That's my theory. That Spider so she is a minority pass? too. Yeah. God damn it. Okay. Mayo ass motherfuckers are here drinking it dog. <laughs> God damn crackers. So before before we before we do the normal goodbye, actually do you guys have anything you want to say like maybe to people about Christmas or Hanukkah or Kwanzaa or about how you don't like any of those or anything? Bah humbug. <laughs> I'm like spider. I celebrate holidays, so please give me gifts. Thank you. All right. Uh, yeah, I got some for the people at home. Fuck you. <laughs> there goes the ad revenue. Yeah, what, fuck I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna censor that. It's gonna it's gonna have you say like something else. I can't I can't think of a funny thing right now. It'll probably say hee ho over it. Good good broadcasting. Do a Great. sound bit of hee ho <laughs> for every curse word. Every curse word. I wonder if there's like a, 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 a AI that'll do that for me. Um, just find probably. Out but yeah that was it for this special december episode of the hello fellow mega tennis podcast again i am laro and with me is glob 
<laughs> Nab. Yeah. And Spoder. <laughs> All right. Goodbye, everyone. Bye. Bye. <laughs>